This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a collaborative effort by the Small Business Administration, uh, the Department of uh, Development Center, the Veterans Business Outreach Center, and the Patsy T. Nick Center for Business and Leadership. I'm Terry Funakoshi, and I'm your host today. And today we have with us Hilary Darby, owner of Belakai Yoga. And before we start, Hilary, I want to congratulate you on your award this year for being the Veteran Women-Owned Small Business of the Year awarded by SBA and VBOC. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much. I could not have done it without the support of the MCBL team, so thank you. Congratulations. So, Hillary, why don't we get into it, and why don't you just tell sure. us about yourself, your background. I'm excited to hear all the good stuff. Yeah, um, well, then, you know, as, as uh, we discussed, the name of the program is Tales of an Accidental Yogi, and I came into this completely backwards. My name, as you said, is Hillary Darby and originally from Georgia, but joined the Navy when I was 17 years old and uh, have been doing the Navy ever since and um, found out my love for yoga through some mandatory fun, as we call it in the military, and uh, went to my very first hot yoga class and, and got hooked there. So a little bit additional background though, I went to the Naval Academy, I graduated from there, secured a billet in flight school, and went to Pensacola, Florida, earned my wings of gold, and uh, had the great privilege and honor to be on the, the wave of combat aviation as they were opening up. And so I was selected to fly the SH-60 Bravo helicopters. And so uh, each service has a variant, mm -hmm. and um, I fly the, the Hawk, so the Seahawk. Um, so there's the Black Hawk, the Jayhawk, anyway. Each service has its own version, and uh, they had just opened that up to women. So I was able to step through that door and um, explore aviation uh, uh, in a whole new way. Wow, that's exciting. So, so um, yep, and, and uh, they, they gave me the training, they gave me the resources, and then I was able to, uh, to fly off of both coasts, San Diego, Jacksonville. I served as a flight instructor, and I've uh, been on a, a major staff, and um, really, have just had some amazing and exciting opportunities, got my education, uh, have a master's in international service from American University, and that was just one of the many, many opportunities that I've been afforded along my journey. And um, you know, the, the overarching drive, though, has been in service. And I've always believed that it's about having a vocation and not a job, and so, Wherever I am, I try to think in terms of how do I best serve. And so I think that that is, is where I am now. That is where as I look forward uh, in the future. Great. So how did this all translate to having a yoga studio? I know. <laughs> I know. So it, as, I was, as I was sharing, I was working with the Marines. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, our commanding officer, and I was his second, said, XO, we're going to go do some hot yoga. And I went, why? <laughs> who, who wants to do yoga in the heat? Right. And so, you know, as a, as a good second in charge, I said, yes, sir, let's go do that. And so we went and grabbed the mat, the towel, and um, I was exhausted and transformed at the end of class, and I just kept going back. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then a couple of years later, the, the studio was for sale, and it had changed hands multiple times. Mm -hmm. And so I had seen it and gone through that little bit of panic as a student, kind of like you would if your favorite coffee shop was going out of business <laughs> or your favorite restaurant. And I saw the studio change hands, uh, and it was about to change hands again. And I remembered that desperation of where will, be, where will my home be mm -hmm. to practice yoga? Because by that time, I had realized that the yoga was an element that allowed me to better live the every aspect of my life. So I was a better mom, I was a better wife, I was a better leader in the military, and, and I also found that through yoga, I could also facilitate relationships, not only with others, but with myself. Wow, that's a lot. So, so tell us exactly, so you had, you didn't want your yoga studio to close? 
Right. You had an entrepreneur kind of buzz. So, so what was the next step? How did you, how did you actually acquire the studio? Oh my goodness. So I, I talked to my husband and mm -hmm. I said, I know this sounds super crazy, mm -hmm. but I think we can do this. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel? Because I was retiring from the Navy. How do you feel mm -hmm. about us buying the, the local yoga studio? Because it's right down the street from my house. And, um, and so I was in communication with the previous owner when she was in the process of selling it. And um, she had another potential buyer and um, and just it felt, you know, as strange as this sounds, like a compulsion from the universe, <laughs> some strange compulsion that we had to to go forth mm -hmm. and purchase the yoga studio so we could keep it local, keep it for the community. And our goal has always been to be a beacon of light for the Wimward community and um, and and the heart of Kailua Town. And so. Um, but I did it all wrong. <laughs> I absolutely, I mean, I answered the call uh -huh. uh, and, I, and I went with my gut, but I also, I didn't have a business plan. I didn't know, I wasn't trained to teach yoga. I just knew I loved to take yoga. And I thought to myself, yeah, oh, it's probably like owning a football team, right? <laughs> or, you know, those, those people, you know, that own the Dallas Cowboys uh -huh. or the Atlanta Falcons, they, they don't play football. Yeah. They just run the show. So I can do that. I know how to run a show. Uh -huh. And uh, wow. There were a lot of lessons to be learned in that journey. So um, I, I found out after the fact about all the tremendous resources, and I think we'll get to that later. But um, we jumped in just like holding our nose, our eyes open, and we're like, oh my gosh, you know, just jumping into the pool and trying to figure out how to swim is, is how our adventure began. Uh, with the love of the yoga, the love of the community, and a firm belief that it would work itself out as long as we focused on making a difference before we focused on making a dollar. So I know that's the passion. You went in, you loved it, you started it, and then when did you realize like, hey, I might need some business to have you here? <laughs> oh my gosh, day one. <laughs> like as soon as, as soon as like, the paper was signed, because you know, it's like kind of like buying a house when you right. buy a, a pre-existing business. I didn't go through that, hey, let me look for a space, or let me, um, let me just kind of line up everything. It was just like, okay, here you go. Yeah. You're now the new owner of, and at the time it had a different name, so you're the new owner of, you know, Bikram Yoga Kailu. And I went, oh my gosh, I have to make sure that, the, you know, the and then the, some of the teachers went away. So pretty much as I was stepping into it, I was having to figure out, you know, bringing in resources, mm -hmm. um, understanding payment, mm -hmm. s understanding the systems that allow you to sign in and check mm -hmm. in, setting up bank accounts. I mean, it was... It was from pretty much day one. And of course, my husband was out of town at his job. <laughs> right. And I went, what have I done? <laughs> so what kind of resources did you find to help you? Well, I was actually just kind of sharing with a friend, mm -hmm. and she knew Noella mm -hmm. Napoleon from Launch My Business. Oh, and so okay. I was talking to my friend and said, and she said, Hillary, I think you should talk to this, this lady. She's my business mentor, my business counselor, and this is part of the resourcing at the Patsy Mink Business Center. And I never heard of you guys, mm -hmm. and I remember going, huh, I wish I'd known about this before because I had tried to do a, uh, a boots to business mm -hmm. class uh, mm -hmm. with the military because I had heard of that and I thought, oh, okay, so I'll learn about being an entrepreneur that way even though I'm now already one. Mm -hmm. And so something happened, the class got canceled and anyway, I met my friend who referred me to Noella and so we met a few times as I were, you know, shared some of the, the challenges of the business mm -hmm. and then I learned about that cohort class, oh. they'll launch my business class. And she said, Hillary, you really should go because you're just going to get this wealth of information and then this forever resourcing mm -hmm. that you can always reach out and call. And if they don't know the answer, they're going to help you find it. And that was so true. Mm -hmm. And when I went, I was, um, you know, because I'm used to like protocol and organization and things like that. And the class was actually exceeded all of my expectations and I had high expectations because I had already met you know one of your right. the lead teachers for mm -hmm. that and I thought wow this is well done and I went home that first day it started actually at the little in doc session mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you do for us okay. and I went home that first day and I said I wish <laughs> I'd known about these folks beforehand because it has just been um, it's nice knowing you have a partner in your journey in right. your business journey well, we're happy to see you grow. We saw you from, you know, when you came in till now, winning all these awards. So I, I want I know we have a picture of your studio. So sure. I, want, I want everyone to see that because it's, it's really nice and uh, you did a great job 
So tell us about what we're looking at. So this is the lobby as you walk into Bella Kai Yoga. We're on the second floor uh, on Ho'olai Street in Kailua Town across from Harbor, Hawaii and right on top of uh, Beatbox Cafe. So you walk in and we really wanted to evoke a sense of safety, a mm -hmm. sense of carefree, a sense of arriving home. And so the name Bella Kai actually is intended, our daughter's name is Bella, and Kai is the, the ocean with its limitless possibilities. And that, that sense, when you look at the ocean mm -hmm. and you feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself, and that's what I want people to feel like when they walk into the space. So you walked in and we had one of our students actually helped us with the feng shui. And so right now you're seeing a picture of our warrior wall. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll talk a little bit about Warriors at Ease. Um, uh, the nonprofit that I work with. Mm -hmm. And so we have a whole section dedicated to the warrior wall, another section to the hot, because we do a lot of the hot yoga. Mm -hmm. And um, and we really just want to have a warm, inviting space so you can talk story and feel like you're with family. Oh, that's nice. So you said it, uh, you named it after your daughter. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your family. Well, my husband, um, JD, he's a godsend. He has been supporting me every step of the way. And he's former Navy, he works for the government, mm -hmm. and um, he retired after 30 years of service with the Navy, so we're very like-minded in our approach to service. And also with our daughter, who is, um, she just turned 13, and so she's, she's been with me as well, and she helps me when she can, and, um, and she's uh, one of the inspirations. We have a little wall where it's got mermaids mm -hmm. and aloha, oh, and nice. um, so we have some, some fun stuff there. But she is, she is our, safe space. Yeah. She is our representation of being part of something bigger than yourself. And so really, I wanted to translate that feeling that we have within our small family to the Windward family and right. to create that sense within the, the extended Ohana of you can come, you can be yourself, leave your judgment at the door and just be with us. Right. And so, and nothing matters right now. Yeah. And so, um, so Bella is like that, and she is just the most amazing soul. And so, once again, she inspires me to to do what I do. And um, she's already kind of entertaining ideas and options for service. She's not sure yet, but she's, you know, working with the Girl Scouts. Has already, you know, worked with um, you know, the Pacific Aviation Museum mm -hmm. and some different things with me. And so, that's great. And I know that they're an inspiration. I met your family, and they're wonderful. You know, all entrepreneurs need that support. Yes. So very lucky you have such an amazing family. But we're going to take a, a short break, a one-minute break. But when we come back, we're going to ask you the hard questions of, you know, more challenges mm -hmm. and then ask you the fun stuff. What's so unique about your business and what kind of programs you run? So we'll be right back in one minute. Stay tuned. Thank you. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. And I think that Aloha. Welcome back to Adventures in Small Business. We're talking with Hilary Darby from Bella Kai Yoga. So Hillary, we left off and then I wanted to ask you, so what are the challenges uh, in the yoga industry? Oh, so um, in Hawaii especially, there is a lot of competition. So that was one of the challenges that I, I knew it, but I didn't really think about it in very real specifics in terms of sales or inventory. Uh, I just assumed that um, that if I continued to offer a good product and a good service, then it would yield, just like effort equals yield. Mm -hmm. And um, But I learned it becomes important, and that's one of the other things that I learned at the Patsy Mink Center about really trying to assess what you offer, define your brand, 
and then try to market in the way that you're different from the competition. Because there's nothing wrong with the competition. They all have uh, what they bring that's unique. But then you realize that you are trying to sell your brand to those folks to bring them in the door. And um, that was, that was um, you know, a, a good lesson for me to know. The other thing, too, is that you know, there are a lot of different teachers, but not every teacher is made the same. Right. And so just learning to navigate um, how to, to work with personnel and to, to try. And, and though I have experience working with different personalities, I had never really worked with it in this kind of niche before because you know, my background is very different than, mm -hmm. than running um, than, than a yoga background. So I question whether you know, my, my previous experience had translatability. Mm. And then because I wasn't a trained instructor at first, I also thought, you know, am I, do I not, because I'm not walking the walk, how do I talk the talk? So mm -hmm. that for me became a priority was to get myself certified to teach mm -hmm. so that then I would have credibility because, you know, in my previous um, opportunities, I've had credibility because I've already been in the trenches. But here, I didn't feel as if I had the credibility, so I was swooping in. So, so working to get that credibility, understanding that the competition. And then the other thing, too, is sometimes you have challenges, uh, like with your landlord, for example. And, um, you know, and how to navigate those waters mm -hmm. in a very constructive and productive way. And finding those lines between diplomacy, but then also realizing at some point, you're not only standing up for yourself, but you're standing up for every single uh, client that walks through the door. Right. And that becomes um, Im important to understand. And then to realize that there's certain ways that you have to respond and work through that. So you're talking about uh, commercial leasing. That's yes. a big topic uh, yes. for a lot of entrepreneurs that you know, rent space. Uh, do you have any examples that you want to share or that you know, advice to give other? Well, I certainly would. Um, when I went through this process at the beginning, mm -hmm. I just hired a lawyer out in town and I paid a lot of money. Um, and I remembered having one of my first conversations with Noella and she was like, you paid what for what? And um, found out that basically the Patsy Mink Center would have helped me do almost all of that for, you know, seriously pennies on the dollar. Um, and so um, they would have saved money, which would have been part of that cushion of, you know, entrepreneurship because that capital is so important to have. So, um, so even still, as I've gone through different challenges, I've worked through the Pat Simeon Center because they have um, the you can you can meet with a lawyer. They'll review your lease, and then they also refer you to their previous cohort graduates. So they're launch my business graduates then that they've worked and mentored with. So you already have a network uh, that is kind of like endorsed. It's like the Angie's List of good on <laughs> business entrepreneurs. So you feel that your dollar is going to be respected. And sometimes, you know, when you're Kind of navigating these waters, you're just going. Oh, I hope, I hope this is right. And so it gives a a, a real comfort to know that. And mm -hmm. you know, some of the challenges could be everything from parking to maybe it wasn't clearly defined in the lease, and now or or you didn't read it as carefully as you should have, and now you're you find that you are responsible for things that perhaps you didn't realize. Um, you know, and now you have a disconnect between what you think should be taken care of by the landlord and what um, the landlord thinks should be taken care of by right. the landlord. So once again, just having some advocates. You know, I know I, I keep beating the drum, and, and no, I am not getting paid to say this. Um, <laughs> but it has just really been helpful. Well, I mean, that's always number one. Like, before you sign a lease, you know, look through it. Is it does it meet your needs? Right. Right. A lot of times leases are written you know, for the landlord, for the right. property. Right. But what, does, what do you need as an entrepreneur? So right. I'm and, glad and you got that yes. service. <laughs> and, and I did. Yeah. And I had actually gone to the right, what I thought was the right, mm -hmm. the right folks. Mm -hmm. and, um, but they didn't read it with the eye for a small business, mm -hmm. which is very different than just, you know, big pockets, large scale business. Oh, that's interesting, right? I'm looking so. at it, not just legally, the words and what's in there, but actually for you, for that right. small so, business. Uh, and I believe that had I taken advantage of your resources, that I would have had that lens mm -hmm. that would have been helpful to me uh, mm -hmm. and, and would have enabled me to ask maybe better questions or, or, or maybe bring it back for negotiation on some things. Well, I mean, well, that's a tough one, but, yep. you know, live and learn, right? Yep.
But I want to get to uh, what makes your yoga studio unique. Uh, I know you have a lot of wonderful programs, so you want to tell us about that? Sure. Um, well, first, you know, we've alluded to this, uh, and I've brought up the concept of service over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, when you look at our website, you know, we talk about service, and then we also illustrate the different things that we're doing to try to serve the community. So mm -hmm. we work. I started working initially with Huakailani School for Girls, which mm -hmm. is now at the Kokokahi YWCA, and our daughter has been there since she was four because I, I wanted to help enable the passion that I had seen there. And our tagline is passion with pra or practice with passion. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to kind of honor the passion that I see in all of those teachers. And then, once again, through a backdoor mechanism, I found out about Warriors at Ease. And mm -hmm. so I was at a friend of mine who I had met through the school, ironically, and they live on the East Coast, and they'd come back to uh, Oahu for their daughter's bat mitzvah, and we were in the same row with the Warriors at Ease executive director and myself. And so that East Coast friend of both of ours facilitated a connection now that we're going forth and growing with. So Warriors at Ease is a national nonprofit that uh, works essentially to try to promote health and resilience within the, the active duty veteran and, and military family community. And so what they do is they take a yoga or a med meditation teacher and they give them techniques so that they can present yoga or meditation in a, in a more effective way. And so all of the yoga is trauma sensitive, military culture informed and evidence based. Oh, that's really And so there's nice. a lot of research on the website, a lot of, um, and we've seen firsthand how it's making a difference, not only in the lives of our, our, our studio members. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's some pictures too. I, I don't know if you've already showed them or not. Oh yeah, on, we have um, some pictures yeah. uh, of you actually doing yoga. Yeah, there's, yes. Yeah, and, with um, the Warriors at East. So let's take a look at that. I, I love those pictures. So uh, right there, that's Miss Cindy. And actually, these pictures were taken uh, for an article that came out November 9th on right. Honolulu Civil Beat. And so they came to the studio and they took some wonderful photos. But this is why we're doing what we're doing. So you have not only the visible wounds of, of war or the visible wounds of service, you have invisible wounds. So it could be sexual assault, sexual harassment, or post-traumatic stress uh, as well. And so it allows, this, this program trains the yoga teacher, trains the meditation teacher to understand that and, and to have techniques so that they can create that safe container, that safe space so that people feel comfortable and want to come practice. So we have uh, families there, you know, uh, kids come sometimes, and it's just this cross-section of people. So we offer free yoga on Wednesday nights to active duty veterans and their families at 7 o'clock oh, at the studio. Nice. And, uh, and all of those, those um, classes are facilitated by a Warriors at Ease trained teacher. Wow. And um, a lot of folks that I've talked to has said that, that this is grounding, that this often will allow that tool in the toolkit, along with other things. So, you know, Warriors at Ease doesn't try to say all you need in your life is yoga. Right. But they say it can very much be a complement to living your life more fully, and we all have trauma. So this isn't this isn't unique specifically to military. The idea of trauma, but we all have trauma, and understanding how to more therapeutically and effectively cope with stress is um, is a goal. And they've really quantified and uh, edified how to to do that process. Wow, that's wonderful. So how do they find out more information if they want to um, find out more about your program? Well, they can come to our website uh, mm -hmm. at Belakai Yoga, at, so www.belakaiyoga.gmail.com mm -hmm. or uh, send an email, Belakai Yoga, or I'm sorry, www.belakai.com and then, um, so Google Belakai and you'll find it. Mm -hmm. And then um, Belakai Yoga at gmail.com and we can send all kinds of information. But on our website are links that talk about Huakailani School for Girls and what we've done together. So we've fundraised, uh, you know, Lots of funds, so mm -hmm. over thousands of dollars uh, to, to contribute to the, both of these causes. And so uh, Warriors at Ease actually has a direct link, and so you can go into their website and see some of the amazing photos and the testimonials and the stories and the research that's mm -hmm. in there. And so our website actually serves as that one-stop shopping. Not only can you see that kind of information and what we're trying to do for the community, but then you can see, you can dig in and you can see our schedule and you can see what we're all about and meet our teachers that way. So That's great. So, Thank you so much for being a absolutely. community contributor. So now here's the question. You're sure. doing such great work. You've been recognized you know, this year for all your work. So what does the future look like for Bella Kai next, I don't know, five, ten years? You know, um, 
I am going to probably get some good consulting on that. But what I would <laughs> really like to do is um, expand our reach and to still focus on being that service oriented, but to diversify a little bit more. I'd like to, to find a brick, or, brick and mortar somewhere else, I think, maybe somewhere more centrally located in the Windward community. And I'd like to be focused on really facilitating wellness programs. And maybe we're ex we expand beyond the yoga. So, you know, we have now such an amazing cadre of folks that I've met, everything from people that teach Tai Chi that are Warriors at Ease teachers to um, other folks that are massage therapists, acupuncturists. So I really have a vision of a more um, well-rounded uh, wellness approach as well as um, how to be programmatic and, um, and to give more tools to the windward side. So you're trying to expand? Yeah. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. So do you have any uh, prospects in line at where you want to expand in the area? Am I allowed to say that? Oh, I don't know. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> I, our, um, we recently worked, actually it was through my contacts at the Patsy Mink Center, we worked with Hua Kailani School for Girls, oh. and they just relocated to the Windward, um, the, the Kokokahi YWCA on Kaneohe Bay oh. Drive, and that campus is so beautiful. Oh. And that, when you walk in and you drive down and you look at the bay, oh. and you see the greenery, and you know that they're, you know, they're farming and there's the butterflies and, and their association with the Girl Scouts and, and they're trying to grow those programs. I would love to figure out how to make Coco Kahi a home and, and mm. marry up with the YWCA. So. <laughs> that wasn't a plug I was just asked. So, yes, yeah. no, I would, that, I, I was just there yesterday morning dropping mm. my daughter off and I looked out over the water and said, this feels like home. Yeah, it's beautiful out there. It so I, I know what you're saying, but. Hillary, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you know, I, I know your work and I, I thank you so much for everything you do for the community and for the veterans. And again, congratulations on your achievement and on your award. Um, and again, please tell the audience where they can uh, help you, get in touch with you, uh, your website. Sure. Uh, www.bellakayoga.com or you can send an email to bellakayoga at gmail.com. Great. Thank you. And thank you for joining us at Adventures in Small Business, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.